earth energy system is its uh, nervous and meridian system. Same as, same as ours, much more complex. It's a cobweb of, of energy lines all over the surface and under and, and above the earth. We are cosmically connected to everything else in the universe through these energy lines. They come into the earth at certain points. And there are, according to the Druid tradition, there are, there are 12 major circles of energy around the earth, bands of energy around the earth, not necessarily great circles. And where these cross are, are particularly sacred sites. And one of them actually is St. Michael's Mount down here. Um, and then from, from every living thing, every leaf, every blade of grass, every person, every building, there is a little, because we are just energy forms, all of us, there is a little energy center and there's a connection to the next and the next and the next and it's a vast complex cobweb. But not just on the surface, it goes below this. I've doused 1,900 feet down a mine and still find earth energy. I mean, the Chinese have known about, uh, I've been working for 4,000 years on, on earth energy and we call it Feng Shui. I, I'm not sure whether the practice of Feng Shui transfers very well between cultures because there is a deep understanding of of, of earth energy and uh, and all its its subtle related um, spiritual and emotional uh, changes that it can can be involved and I think when it transfers to this country it it uh, tends to be totally simplified we were in Australia uh, three years ago I think and we were very anxious to meet one of the bush rangers there who was in charge of 170, no, 470 square miles of, of Aborigine land where there were some of the, the ancient Aborigines living. And he was, he was a dancer and he was really into earth energy and all of these things. And in 17 years, he said, he has not been able to get close to their knowledge. And uh, he says that just occasionally he, he, he looks after this piece of land. He knows all the legends and, and all of that. And just occasionally he says, I see an elder sitting in one particular place and, and he'll acknowledge me but not say anything. And he says, I don't know what he's doing, but it's something pretty important. And then he just sort of disappears and back into his place. So they're, they're, they're preserving it. They are, I think, desperately afraid that it, if, if the... Uh, if we find out about it, we'll misuse it, which normally we do. And we had a, an astonishing experience in, in New Zealand where I had doused uh, one of the Marais, the sacred, really sacred site in South Island, where the Marais had, had uh, they had certain stages where if you, it took 10 years to, to develop the capability of assimilating the energy from these places up the mountain. And there was a Marai, which was normally the, the woman's place. It was full of water. And we went up there and I doused, and there was, there was, I think there were five energy lines coming into it and uh, a huge spiral and lots and lots of radials coming out of it. Very, very active place, but no manifestation in it. And while we were there, there was, we, we sort of moved in and out of a party which included um, a Maori girl called Donna who had been taken from her family very early, about four years old, because they recognised that she had the potential to have the knowledge of energy. And she lived with the elders who taught her this. And I watched her standing or sitting beside this, this pool, and I had put a stone where I found the Earth Energy Centre. And without um, anyone's knowledge, she had brought one of her sacred green stones, the Punamo stone, with her pack on the back. And she very, very carefully walked into the centre of this, this thing and, and uh, moved my stone and, and put her stone down. She hadn't seen me dancing. She hadn't seen me putting the stone there. And that was a, a huge vindication for, for me, actually. But it was an absolute delight because she had a long ceremony and she put this thing and com communed. And I went up the next day and there was, there was still no water in the, in the thing. It was dusty. And I asked for a manifest if there was a manifestation, and I was able to draw it out in the dust, and it was the most beautiful, nine-petaled thing that there was uh, nine double petals on it, 
and there were nine around a diameter of, of something like uh, 14 feet. And I was able to, to use one dowsing rod and follow the thing round and, and mark it and make the mark in the dust. And it ended up absolutely perfectly where I'd started. Now, you can't do that in a in a 14-foot circle with all these complicated shapes. And it just fitted perfectly in the end. I almost cried. I mean, it was just so beautiful. And that was the result of her knowledge and communication, her consciousness, her training. And the manifestation was beautiful. Now, that happened within... Uh, overnight. I think what happened was that the ancients were very, very closely tuned to the earth and its energies. And they would uh, travel to a place where they felt good about the energy in the place and they would sit down. And if there was a, a local well that would supply water, they would stay there. And as soon as they, they stayed, they would start ceremony. And as soon as the ceremony started, the earth energy would respond and it would grow stronger and bigger, and then it would become a place of where more people would come in and communicate with this this centre, and it would become a sacred site because of the ritual. So the sacred site developed with a with with a possibly a natural piezoelectric effect on the a magnetic anomaly or something, which made them feel interested, if you like, and then the conscious input from the, the humans would start making it. Uh, develop in a communicate a way of communicating with them, and them feeling good. Ley lines are perfectly valid. They are they are uh, technically they are straight alignments of more than three sacred sites or special sites. And to some people, they are enormously important. Um, they are quite important to us because the. The whole concept of the Michael and Mary thing started with a, a straight alignment of St. Michael sites from St. Michael's Mount up to Avebury by John Michel. Also, the Rishi brothers discovered that there was an alignment of sacred sites from Athens to uh, St. Michael's Skellig in Southern Ireland, going through an extraordinary number and, uh, I mean, it's not an absolutely straight line because if, if uh, St. Michael wanted a site on the Michael line and there was a huge crag there, he would put his big cathedral there <laughs> on the top of the hill, which is slightly off. And nobody could quite understand why. But you see, once you start following the, the energy line, the energy line weaves around the straight line and move, goes into these places and then moves out again and generally keeps the direction of the of the ley line. So that's why I think the ley lines are important. They are the indicators that there is something important happening underneath. That's only my opinion. Because the energy lines are made up from a number of different frequencies, it very often happens that one of the frequencies, uh, that the, whoever it is, is, doesn't resonate with that frequency. And it, they feel slightly uncomfortable. And... Um, what, that, what happens is that they, they automatically compensate for this feeling of discomfort by using their own energy. And that makes them tired. And that, if they get tired, they get ill. And, and every time they go through it, it's exacerbated, this effect. So they get to the stage sometimes where if it's in a particular room, they, they can't use that room. So all we do is go in and tune in to these people and, and find out whether there's one. You can do us and find out if there's one energy frequency that's disturbing them and um, have a chat with the management and say look these people have got a problem because of that and they say whoops sorry and they make it a healing energy provided it doesn't affect somebody else down the line but they can do that and we can't